So if you spill coffee on yourself, couldn't that accident be maybe telling you how to handle a problem in real life? Our next guest says that it could be more than just mere coincidence. They're teaching us about waking dreams, the messages we receive while we're awake from our subconscious when we come back. Waking dreams are the same as we all dream four to six times every night. We're familiar with nighttime dreams. Waking dreams are omens or signs or dreams that occur all day long and give us messages. For example, let me give you, you're walking to your car and you see some change on the ground and you bend down, you pick it up, it's a quarter, dime and a nickel and it means small change is getting ready to come into your life. High profile example, Winona Ryder goes to court for shoplifting. While in court, she's jostled by a camera and actually breaks her arm. What's the message Winona? This is a waking dream. The message, the message to Winona is break the habit. She makes her money through the camera. If she doesn't break the habit, it's going to break her career. Let's say you're thinking of giving up alcohol, but you're struggling. You're not sure yet. You go to the store. You get your fifth of vodka. You come home. It's on the counter. You pour yourself a drink, and oops, you knock the fifth on the floor, and it shatters. What's the message? to break the habit. Now you had a, an interesting analogy about President Bush Absolutely. and where this all began in a classroom. Yes, when he was notified of the, the terrorist attack, he was sitting in a classroom with students. And there's definitely a message there to him, waking dream, and that is that this lesson of terrorism is going to require a big learning curve on his part, and he's about to get schooled in terrorist attacks and things of this nature. And if you've ever wondered what your dreams mean, we have some news that works for you. The authors of Trust Yourself teach you how to understand your dreams. And this morning, Nicole and Michael Sebastian join us live in the studio. We have Susan from Gibraltar on the line. Good morning, Susan. Hi, um, I've been having a dream at least five times about um, a big gorilla chasing me, mm -hmm. like through a Olympic sized <laughs> pool. I'd have to swim and swim and I can't get away. Huh. And I've had it like four times. What? I, I don't know what it is, you know? Well, first, I'll mention the recurring mm -hmm. issue. Recurring it's recurring dreams. because it's a strong message. And when we don't figure out the message, that's when it turns into a nightmare. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. any significance about the gorilla? Absolutely. The, the gorilla represents some issue in your life, Susan, that um, you need to face. And it could be finances, could be relationship, uh, could be career related. And only you know that. But when you face it, the gorilla will go away or yeah. the gorilla will huh. shake mm -hmm. your hand and say, good job, and, Susan. And, and uh, like the monkey on your back type exactly. of thing. Exactly. Interesting. Yeah. Okay. We now have uh, Donna on the phone who is from Madison Heights. Donna, good morning. Good morning. Um, my dream is also reoccurring and it's a, of a spider and it's a huge, like, inches long and, and I'll wake up from the spider. I was going to ask her if she owns a pesticide company. <laughs> <laughs> well, spider, you know, if it represents a fear, then that could be whatever issue is going on for you in your life at the current time. So all dreams are directly related to what's going on in our life, and that is the key question you would need to ask yourself upon waking up. And it's, it's probably relationship oriented because spiders make webs and we weave our webs and uh, our relationship with other people. So it's an interconnected type of event for you. Mm, interesting. We next have uh, Marcy on the phone, I believe. Marcy, good morning. Good morning. Um, I had a dream that I met some old classmates and we were all going to an affair and everyone was wearing a Kelly green dress. I was afraid I couldn't go because I couldn't find a dress that size or be able to afford it. Mm -hmm. But I finally did, and I was able to go to the party, and it was just so strange. Okay, girlfriend. <laughs> <laughs> you, you had the concern that you weren't going to fit in. Mm -hmm. You weren't going to fit in and right. be accepted. We have a good uh, technique for remembering dreams, and it's a vibrational technique. It's actually toning just before we go to sleep. Crossing over. In the book, Trust Yourself, you suggest that you can get in touch with the mm -hmm. deceased. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, explain that to me. Okay. Then that gets a little, uh, a little. It's a little out there. Yeah. I understand. Rightly so. Okay. You know, let's take John Edwards crossing over. I mean, bless that man. I'm not about here. To but do it in a minute. All right. To disregard him, his abilities. You know, he has that ability to cross over. Well, what we call the technique is connecting, and the book is called Trust Yourself, meaning you don't need John Edwards, mm -hmm. and you don't need Susie the Psychic. You have it all within, all the abilities to connect with deceased loved ones. When you dream, 
When you sleep, you dream. When you dream, you leave the body. And therein lies the ability to connect with deceased mm -hmm. loved ones. It's been said through the eons, St. Paul spoke of dying daily. And you can connect every single night. All you do is hold a fond memory of the person you want to connect with. Hugh, just before you go to sleep. Mm -hmm. And then drift off with that fond memory. Yeah. And you ask, mm -hmm. can I please be connected? And if you do it night one, night two, night three, you will have a dream. Well, dreams are fascinating. Some are mysterious, some are frightening, and a lot of people may not really even remember them. But the average person dreams about four to six times a night. I used to work for a fast food restaurant, and I worked there so long and I hated it. I used to have a reoccurring dream that I died and I went to that restaurant to work and that's where that was my purgatory and I was the only person that worked there and it went on and on. Sort of a nightmare I guess, right? Oh, he didn't yeah. enjoy working there. Yeah. Very good. His own personal living hell, mm -hmm. purgatory. It's a temporary place and you know he couldn't stand the job as it is and the dreams trying to to let him know you know hey this really isn't the best place for you to be. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So the dream is saying, dude, get a life. Okay. <laughs> get out of there, restaurant. Move on, That's right. right. And in the book, we teach three methods that you can access that information through dreams, through synchronicities or waking dreams, mm -hmm. coincidences, and intuition. Wow, very interesting. Mm -hmm. Do you remember your dreams when you wake up? Do you know what they mean? We met up with two people who call themselves the dream dudes, and they say your dreams are a guidebook for your life. In fact, they're convinced your dreams are a window to your future. If you dream about sex... You need to get intimate with that aspect of the person you're dreaming about having sex with. The dream dudes say that dreams come in a certain frequency. And to activate that frequency, you need to say you. You. The hue helps clear the, the clutter and the chatter so you're open and receptive mm -hmm. to the messages coming in. To know more about yourself, you need to know more about your dreams. It occurs on a daily and nightly basis, and it's free. Tell me what couldn't be more perfect than that. It's available to us. It's the universal database, and we can tap into it any time. Michael and Nicole, the Dream Dudes, have written a book called Trust Yourself, Master Your Dreams, Master Your Destiny. You can read an excerpt on our website, a part about how to remember your dreams, at clickondetroit.com. Pleasant dreams.